How's it going everybody? Zach here from Bluebot Tech. So today we're going to be going over how to add Zigbee and Z-Wave to your Home Assistant setup. Now this should work either with a Raspberry Pi or with a VM setup. Now with a VM you may have to pass the uh, Zigbee Z-Wave dongle through to your VM, but that shouldn't be too much of an issue. As you can see today I'm using this Go Control Stick by Nortec. Now you can pick this up on Amazon for anywhere from $45 to $55. It really depends. It goes, you know, fluctuates $10 here and there depending on, you know, who knows what. Now originally I did pick up the Aotech stick. Now that is unfortunately just Z-Wave and for me personally I wanted to have Z-Wave and Zigbee and not multiple dongles so I ended up returning to Aotech and picking up this Nortec. Now, for me personally, having Zigbee and Z-Wave is a huge addition to Home Assistant because it lets you deploy things like window sensors, door sensors, locks, um, even lights that are super low powered and don't require constant changing of batteries like something like Wi-Fi is going to. So we're gonna go ahead and plug this stick into our Raspberry Pi, boot it up, and we'll show you how to get this all added. All right, let's get started. Okay, now that our Raspberry Pi has booted back up after plugging in our Nortec, Z-Wave, and Zigbee dongle, uh, you'll see I have some entities that are currently not available. I do use Zigbee and Z-Wave within my network, so I've completely kind of blown all that away. I've left the stuff in my uh, lovely dashboard though, so that may come back after we're all set back up. Now to get started, what we're going to do is go to Supervisor, System, and then the three little dots here, hardware. And why we need to go here is we have to figure out where exactly our USB dongle is located. So several months ago, you used to be able to use the, just the TTY USB zero. Um, however, there was a, a warning on, a, on an update that you, you need to use the absolute path. I don't know what the current status of that is, but this has been working for me. So the only difference you'll see in these lines that start with dev serial by ID is at the very end you'll see this IF00 port 0 and IF01 port 0. So uh, that interface 00 is uh, the Z Wave and interface 01 is your Zigbee. So we're going to want to take note of those. All right, we can close out of that once we do that. Then next, we'll start with Z Wave first. Okay, so as you can see, I've now gotten rid of any of the remnants of Z-Wave from my home assistant. So we're going to be starting from scratch. Go ahead and add the integration now. So again, we're starting from scratch with Z-Wave JS. Do you want to use this? Yes, submit. Okay, it's installed. And as you can see, it's already discovered my uh, Nortec uh, Z-Wave stick, the Go Control one. Put that in the basement. Finish. Now, when you're starting from scratch, uh, from the reading I was doing back on the Z-Wave page, as you can see down here, there were some mentions of um, they will create the key for you. I'll uh, try and show you where to find that then. So, go in here to configure. As you can see, this is already set up. We should have generated a lot of our Z-Wave files that usually get generated. And yes, so we got our Z-Wave config scenes. So we should be good to go from there. Go back into the configuration. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run upstairs and add my lock and I will screen record uh, on my phone as I'm doing that, how that would be done, uh, super easy. Okay, so as you can see, we're going to go down here to configuration, scroll down our integrations to Z-Wave JS. We're going to add a node. Since this is a lock, we're going to check that use secure inclusion. Now that the uh, Z-Wave network is in inclusion mode, I'm going to go ahead and punch in that programming code for my Z-Wave lock. Once it gives me once I have that programming code in, I'm gonna go ahead and press zero. That's just how it's done on the slage. And once it is added to the network, I should get some sort of green check mark. As you can see, we got a network connected. It dropped us back to the Z-Wave integration. 
So I'm going to scroll back down here, go in, and we now have this node 10. Node 10 is the lock. You can see there's no entities at this time, but once we give it some time to update via the Z-Wave network, we should have a couple entities added here in the next couple seconds. Okay, and we're back from adding that lock. Now, as you can see, we have two devices and 17 entities. So this is significantly more entities than when we had when I migrated from the old deprecated version. So based on you know my experiences here, I would suggest, especially with something like a lock, removing it from the Z-Wave network and then just re-adding it. As you can see, um, it's showing up as that node ID 10 and it was originally named node ID 10. Um, you know, I've removed and added this lock several times, so I assume that's why. We have the touchscreen deadbolt that did eventually come through. So here are, are many, many more entities. So we have the same sensors, a lot are still disabled, um, but those are mostly managed from configurations on the lock. And there are, if you read through the, the Z-Wave JS documents, there are some things that Z-Wave JS still can't do. But now that we've gotten extra entities, I'm expecting us to have somewhere in here where we could potentially add and maybe even remove door codes, which the old Z-Wave uh, was not able to do, especially for my lock. So again, um, I'm using that, that Slage Smart Sense lock. So, okay, so based on my prior experience with uh, adding this lock in the old deprecated version of Z-Wave, um, I do believe one of these access control options is where you would generally be able to add a door code. So like I mentioned before, um, some things still aren't going to be directly available in the Z-Wave JS. It is still under development, but it is the long-term kind of plan. Uh, at least that's the way it seems for now for Home Assistant. So I'm happy to add codes at the keypad for now. I don't do it that often, um, but I do understand that you know, if you have somebody like a dog walker or for whatever reason you need to let somebody in your house, adding and being able to remove those temporary codes is kind of nice. So that is kind of a letdown for me personally. Um, other than that though, this was actually a pretty easy setup. Again, we didn't really have to add, worry about adding keys or anything like that. Let me see if I can find out where your key is just so uh, you know how to locate that for whatever reason you may need it. Okay. So I was able to locate that. Obviously you can get to Z-Wave.js from in your configuration tab. If you go over to the supervisor tab though, as you see, we also have a Z-Wave.js add-on now. Now, of course you can do any of the auto update and watchdog and start on boot toggles that you want. Obviously documentation like with all other uh, add-ons. Now in our configuration, that's where we're gonna see our device and our network key. So that is where you can now find that. That's super nice, um, really convenient, way more convenient than it was before. Now with the log, if you're you know, a more advanced user, this is definitely somewhere where you're gonna wanna check and make sure that everything stood up the way it was supposed to. Um, if you are having issues with adding, as you can see the, the direction of the communication, that's really nice. So everything that's going on and while my lock was adding. So as you can see, it's probably, here's where we were updating and getting all the different uh, lock attributes and everything seems to have gone well. I don't see any issues in the logs or any errors. So that's always good to know. I actually failed to execute. Okay, so yeah, it did a complete interview of everything. That's when we got everything. Okay, so, so far I do like Z-Wave.js. Um, if we start noticing anything weird, we'll leave comments and change the description, maybe even put out a different video. All right, so that is a quick overview of Z-Wave JS. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Definitely don't forget to like, subscribe, leave us a comment, let us know what you think. We're trying to make these videos better and better every time. So uh, your feedback is definitely appreciated. Okay, so let's go over how to add Zigbee to our network. Now, Zigbee, in my opinion, is much easier than Z-Wave. Uh, no special keys to deal with or anything like that. Uh, we're going to do the same thing we did prior. 
we're going to add our integration. So we're going to look for Zigbee. Now you see this here is Zigbee Home Automation. You'll see it in other places as ZHA. It's one and the same. Okay, so with ZHA we get a drop down menu, which is kind of nice. Um, you can choose this USB one that corresponds directly to that interface zero one that we talked about before. And click submit. Now, while this is adding, you could always do this manually and paste in that long dev serial by ID, etc. But this is kind of nice that it does it for you. Now, if you do that manual option, you're going to have to also choose this manually. So you'll get a list of a couple different options. I find this easier and honestly, I find this to be a, a, a great dongle. So this is the way I would go. This is in my basement. So this area doesn't really matter since it's the controller, but we'll do that anyway. From here, what we're going to do is head over to file editor and we will want to, for me, uncomment this ZHA section, but for you, you're going to want to add this in. So the ZHA USB path, like we did with Z-Wave and then you're going to need this database path slash config slash zigbee.db. This is how Zigbee manages the network and fixes things if need be. So go ahead and save that. And if you ever need to find that Zigbee file, while you can't, you shouldn't be able to read it, but yes. Okay, so you can't read it with the standard file editor, but it is there. Okay, so we'll head on over back to configuration, integrations, and click configure. Now I have a couple factory reset bulbs in my network, so they should just pop up. We'll see if they do. And we'll click add device. Okay, so now we'll start searching for Zigbee devices and in a matter of, you know, a couple seconds to a couple minutes, we should see Zigbee devices start to populate here and then it'll give us an area to add to. So if we need, if you have old bulbs that were connected to another hub, you may need to go and factory reset them. I know some of my GE bulbs, they have a factory reset process of something like turn them off and on three times in a row, they'll dim and then they'll blink when they're connecting to the network. Okay, so as you can see, one of my GE bulbs has just joined our Zigbee network. This bulb is in my basement, so I can go ahead and add that to my basement area. If you haven't configured areas in your Home Assistant, you can always, I believe, add a new area. Yep, so add a new area. Now if we go back, we'll see that that GE bulb is a soft weight model and it's added to my basement. So we can go into this. And I'm currently looking at the lamp, so I can click off, it turned off, on, it turned on. You can also go in here to the settings and adjust brightness levels. So it just dimmed, it dimmed more, and now it's back to full brightness. So one thing I have noticed about you know upgrading from Home Assistant from other hubs is the uh, the latency. There there's little to none, so that is a nice thing. So anyway, as I was saying, I think Zigbee is uh, much easier than Z-Wave. Um, I certainly would suggest giving it a try and seeing what you like, and it's super easy to add these devices. So I'm going to go ahead and reload my entire network. Um, I took a snapshot earlier. I want to show you some of the cool things you can do with Zigbee, um, especially with lamps, kind of like I have going on, and just an overall mesh network. So give me one second to do that. Okay, and I've now just reloaded my Zigbee stuff from a snapshot that I took earlier. Now what you can see is we have several more devices, uh, some Singlet, some GE. So the nice thing about this, what you can do is I have a lot of groups set up. So as you saw, we had basement areas and areas are different than groups. So if you said, if you want to, you can add a group down here in the right hand corner and kind of a, a nice thing. So I don't have a dimmer set up on my island instead I have two standalone light bulbs um, now a dimmer may be better in this situation but I used what I had so two light bulbs I wanted them to act as more of a cohesive unit so I tied those two light bulbs to a group and now I only operate things based on that group now there's a new feature with the Zigbee there's a visualization feature so as you can see we can visualize the network I'm not sure what all you can do with this yet it's a fairly new feature but figured I'd mention it so you can see each of the different types of entities within the Zigbee network now I assume the different shapes mean it has different features so I know some of the GE lamps you can add devices through them um, whereas these singlet lamps you can't but these singlet lamps do have uh, 
power monitoring, so I don't know if a circle would be different than a square or whatever. Um, you also have the link type. Now I haven't dove too deep into what these links mean, so if we zoom in here, 12 out of 12, 52 by itself, 253 over 104, so I haven't dug into what these individual things mean yet, but uh, seems like, like a feature they've been working on over the past month or so. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video of adding Z-Wave and Zigbee to your home assistant. I think for a $46 dongle, it adds a ton of features to uh, to your home assistant. Now, Wi-Fi is definitely nice, but having the ability to do those low power sensors at, at doors and windows, I think is definitely necessary. All right, thanks for watching. I hope this was an easy video to follow along with, adding Zigbee and Z-Wave to your home assistant network. But that about does it for today. Let us know what you thought of this video. Give us a thumbs up subscribe. We also have a Facebook channel. You can check us out over there at the Blue Bot Tech channel. And we look forward to see you guys next time. All right. Thanks a lot.